the trending requirement. You guys always try to reach out on these numbers and our websites, and you can write email to us as well. So probably someone will get back to you about the upcoming training plans. So you can always, you know, use the expert uh, knowledge to just upgrade yourselves. So definitely it is just kind of the, you know, to a communication where you can get the knowledge from us and definitely we'll also help you to grow in your career. And also we sometime learn from you also because people are coming from different, different background. They're having a different, different kind of the expertise. So while exchanging the knowledge between each other, probably we get uh, more understanding about the network and security and the cloud infrastructures because our technology is getting day by day change. So we should have to be upgraded always. If you're not going to upgrade, might be someone is going to replace us. So better try to learn, keep learning always and keep trying to you know do something which is unique in the market. So nowadays we know that the Cisco SD-WAN is in a boom and everyone is talking about the Cisco SD-WAN and a lot of people are struggling to understand the Cisco SD-WAN. There's a lot of issues uh, why people are struggling the main issues the having the lab issues okay so people are like struggling to get lab access for the cisco sd van and to building the lab for the cisco sd van it's not a cup of tea you have to invest more or might be you have to pay some institute to get the lab access or might be if you are just trying to build on lab on your uh, hardware might be the laptop and server it is going to required more resources, more cost to build that lab. Normal laptop basically cannot handle the Cisco SD-WAN lab. So no worry, we also have the lab solutions. If you register for the SD-WAN solutions, any of the courses with the GUINET technology, you'll get the free of cost lab access that is available 24 into seven, okay? And it is always up and working. So no need to worry about the labs. Labs will be available for you. Just you have to do the practice, okay? You just have to follow the instruction from the experts who is going to teach you about the technologies. And further, you just have to do your uh, practice on the live labs. So how the lab is available? Let me just show you the labs part as well. So if you uh, register for the GUINET technology, you will get such kind of the links. Might be the, you can see here, just might be you'll get the rack information. Right where you can see, this is the rack information for the unit. And if you log in this rack, probably let me just log out and I'll show you how it is going to be logged in. So probably if I log out from here, you can see I have just logged out from here. And uh, if I'm trying to log in, this is the, your credential is going to be created based on your name. So right now I'm going to log in by the admin and this is the admin password. Probably let me just share the admin. And this is what the admin password. And based on that admin username and password, we just log into the lab. So you can also always log, log into your labs. And once you log into your labs, basically you can get access and you can just try to play with the topology. So you can see right now, complete SD-WAN topology is up and working. So here you can see these are the branch locations, or I can say these are the end sites where my edge router is connected with the legacy routers. And this is my controllers. You can see this is my controllers where my vManage, vBond, vSmart, and the root CA. And this is a management PC from which I'm just getting access of the vManage dashboard. And these controller having a different, different transport connectivity. One is the INET, one is the MPLS. And from INET and MPLS, we are connecting our data center locations. You can see with a dual transport with the MPLS and internet. And further also we having the branch sites. So this is my CH router that is a CSR. And if you go a little bit down, we're having another branch site where we just having the MPLS. So I'll explain from very basics how this lab has been built. And we always build this lab from zero. So when I start to building this lab configuration, and when I explain you guys how to set up this lab and all, it is completely blank. Note my word, it is not like something will be configured. Yes, topology will be there because I built the topology, it's take a time. So if you start building the topology from zero, it is going to take unnecessary time. So I'll tell how the topology can be built or I can just export this topology. If I guys, if you guys want, I can share this topology as well. So you can just export in your EVNG and you can start doing the configurations. So in this lab, you can see here, 
basically we having a different different legs which is acting as a lan one is the static routing one is the ospf one is the bgp so we'll configure all the steps how the static routing is going to be configured how the ospf is going to be configured how the bgp is going to be configured in the lan network and how the centralized and localized policy is going to be configured uh, from the you know v manage point view to the and that is going to push from the v smart so this is also going to be done in our lab topology and additionally we understand from how the routers of the v manage that is edge going to configure from the cli and versus from the gui so graphical user interface and the command line user interface so basically we understand that you know cli versus v manage mode configuration so here i'll tell you how the template is going to be created how what is the feature template what is the device template what is the cli template so let me just show you let me just see if i can log into the we manage i'm just talking about a little bit lab then we'll start the session from zero but i know people always having a question about the labs so i just wanted to show you all about the labs so here uh, i'm going on this pc so this pc i'll explain from zero if you see the config this pc having some ip address 192.168.10.10 and this is the ip might be configured on the vmanage.1 so if i'll try to ping no worry i'm just showing it is from just demonstration but when i'll start doing the configuration everything will do from the zero so we'll start from zero and we'll build completely the policy the service chaining like whatever we having the traffic steering the policies localized centralized policy template everything how it is going to be you know configured so let me just go and put the https and if i am going to the https you can see probably it is <clears throat> so this is my v manage dashboard so i can just go and log into the v manage dashboard so here i'll go admin and i'll just type the admin so you guys can see here this is my vmanage dashboard and you can see some of the sites are up and some are the down still so if you want to see which site is down so this is a previous batch lab so you can see vh1 is unreachable so for some reason this vh1 is unreachable probably it will be reachable soon or might we have to just restart but you can see my v smart v bond v manage everything is up and working and if i want to configure the templates you can see we having a device template and feature templates where i can just create a different different the feature template and device template i can onboard the devices okay and similarly if you go in the policies might be we having a some policies some centralized policy some localized policy which we just partially completed like uh, because the lab was damaged in between so while just complete the testing else this policy list will be the very high because we just keep going to get more than 20 policy and template would be around 30 plus templates so feature template and device template so that is going to be huge but for time being it is showing very less because the tab lab was damaged in between the classes so we just completed some testing dia omp route preference and service chaining these all three type topics we covered for the last batch when we just uh, trying to do in the previous month so <sighs> it is like how basically you will get the uh, v manage v bond uh, like uh, v smart access by by sitting on the v manage centralized single pan of glass and this is how the lab is going to be built and is going to be useful for your practice so you will get the free lab of access once you you know start your uh, study with the gwinnett technology so let's start our session further because we having the lab understanding now so how how we are going to further continue our session so let's understand So already I explained about the Gwinnett about the courses. So I'm once again welcome you all in the Gwinnett technology, and we know that different different courses we are offering from here. But let's focus on our study. So first we have to understand why SD WAN, and we'll understand benefits of SD WANs. So before I explain the SD WAN, we just have to understand how the previous time or like current time legacy infrastructure WAN was. or is working so might be some of the van is already replaced with the new van that is a hd van 
or some customer are still planning to replace in future right so this is how we just have to understand how basically previous van was working and then how sd van is going to overcome different different problem of the previous sd van so if you guys think about the previous sd van when i talk about the van which is known as the wide area network so it's very very basic we having the lan local area network and van is the wide area network so if you're doing the ccna you just know about the lan and van so this van is just used to connect the different different office locations different different isp locations different different customer locations to just extend your lan connectivity from one to another locations so how it is going to happen might be this is your lan where your local area network is connected behind this lan you having a different different client different different server ap and connected and further this is connected over the van and this could be the router van router and this is going to connect with the isp so what is isp isp is like service provider internet service provider which is just extending your connection from one location to another location so just think this location is known as the branch one and you having another location might be which is known as the branch two so this location also we having the lan connection right behind this lan we having the pc connected server connected and then after we having the wan routers again we having router and this is also going to connect to isp so if these two locations want to communicate to each other we required the wan without wan we cannot extend our connectivity from one location to another location this is the thumb rule we just have to follow if we are not going to follow probably we cannot achieve the internet connection mpls connection from one office location to another office location so this is wan so what sd wan is going to do sd wan is not going to play any very rocket science here it is going to do the same thing it is going to do the same thing just extending your lan connection over the isp with another locations so these routers are which is the wan routers they are going to replace with the sd wan routers this is a one thing we are going to do that so this will become the sd wan router so this is one thing and this is also sd wan router again we having the same connections so this is the lan they just want to talk to this lan or might be some data centers they will go to the sd wan router they will go to the isp and they will go to the another sd wan router and then finally they will reach to the lan locations so what is the benefits we are just replacing the router then what is the benefits yes there is a benefits okay that's why we are using the sd wan so if i talk about the sd wan so wan is the wide area network and sd wan is basically software defined wide area network so this is my sd wan so this is something which is running through the software and this is something simple wide area network so if i talk about the wide area network it is simple which doesn't having any capability to just understand the software instructions so what is software software is like you just think about your pc you just installing any software any applications any software what they are doing they are just running one of the program and based on the program you are just playing around with that software like one of the excel file right so for that we are just running the microsoft os patch update or like that software and which is going to give you the excel file where we can just uh, make the data entries where you can do the mathematical calculation we can build the ppt in word file you can do the lot of uh, writing things so this software is going to give us the flavors luxury by using those you can just ease of things for your life so you can do lot of things based on the softwares so this software earlier it was not available in the wan solutions but when it define the sd wan it added one of the intelligent software which having the capability to just manipulate the thing as per your intent so if i talk the manipulate the things as per your intent that means if you want to do something based on your requirement you can do by doing the programming and software whatever define in this sd wan solution which earlier it was a missing in the wan solution there was some logical programming 
there was some logical command line from using them we can do some kind of manipulation but if i include the sd wan like software defined wan which having a more feature if i compare to the wan normal wan legacy wan features so let's understand one by one what was the problem and how it is going to basically overcome by the sd wan so if you see already there are a lot of bullet points for the sd wan but i am not going to talk this wan fits first let's understand first problems so if i talk about the normal legacy wan like how it was working so they having a lot of problem just give me one second so this software having a lot of problem uh, this wan technology having a lot of problem still it is running so you can try to understand <coughs> one by one so first they having the complex operations right i'll explain how it is a complex operations they having the high cost they having the limited scale they having no cloud app readiness they having the fragmented security they having a limited application awareness right they having insufficient bandwidth issues they having a disjoint solutions right so let's understand one by one right so if i talk about the complex operation so what that means right so if i talk about the complex operation that means let's say suppose you are using the legacy wan routers right let me just use my uh where is my whiteboard let me just use this allow me couple of seconds it is getting ready so how basically complex network is going to happen so let's say suppose in your network in legacy wan network you having a requirement to just do the snmp configuration for all the routers might be you are the big enterprise you having a 10000 router right so if you having a 10000 router and you just have to do the snmp configuration for some reason might be you have just have to change the version if you are running the version 1 you just want to change for the version 2 or might be you are running the version 2 of the snmp you just have to change the version 3 so this is a simple requirement in the legacy one wan technology right and someone ask you or might be customer ask you hey can you just uh, can you just change the you know wan uh, routers snmp version information from v1 to v2 or v2 to v3 so you can definitely you have to do so how you can do probably you just have to log in one by one to the all routers like r2 r3 r4 whatever you have r5 r6 so you just have to log in till r 10000 router one by one and you just have to prepare this script and you just have to change all the command line based configuration to the all routers right so you don't you don't think it is going to utilize your more resource because the 10000 router is a huge right and to achieving this snmp configuration it is going to require the more resource right and they have to do the monotonous kind of work right and there is a chance might be if you are touching the thousand of devices there is a chance you can make a mistakes right so you can make a mistakes as well so human error can be happen so there is be all, also risk so this is a, one of the complexity if you have to change the one of the single liner configuration you just have to touch 10000 of the router by the different different engineers or it is going to like uh, add the complexity in network there is a chance for you know uh to the configuration on the uh, router while doing the configuration on the router there would be the error right so this is the chance this is the one thing so there is adding a complexity while doing the changes let's say another example you take again you have to require to just you know do the you know ios upgradations for this router so someone asks you just have to do the ios upgrade so again it is going to add the complexity you just have to arrange the ios image all the locations someone go on the site someone have to you know some local engineer have to share their screens and after sharing the screen basically you just have to basically uh, copy the ios from the local laptop to the router or the switches and then further you just have to upgrade the ios it is also going to take a lot of complexity lot of effort for you so this is how two examples we have additionally examples let's say this is the 
configuration point of view i am talking right now simple configuration let's say suppose you having a two routers again running there here r1 and r2 and they having two wan links connected might be this is your adnt circuit and might be this is your verizon circuit so this is two links i have connected on this particular routers this one acting as a primary and this is acting as a secondary so this is like two links i have and below that link i have the lan connection here so this is how they are connected from the lan and from the lan behind this lan we having the end user pc is connected so let's say suppose from lan this pc the gateway would be the lan might be the lan switch or might be the actual router ip address or if you are running the fhrp that is a first hope redundancy redundancy protocol which having a three flavors that is the hsrp vrrp or glvp right so these these two hsrp and glvp is cisco proprietary and vrrp is open and standard sd wan doesn't support hsrp and glvp they only support the vrrp so might be you are running the bgp on this wan side here is the bgp here might be you are running the ospf for the lan or if you are not running the ospf might be you are running the some first hope redundancy protocol or might be along with the ospf you are running the fhrp or might be the hsrp it is fhrp any of the protocols hsrp so basically this is going to give the virtual gateway ip address for this pc so let's assume this pc want to talk to the any internet way destination 8.8.8.8 so how the traffic flow is going to be happen in the legacy environment so the traffic flow will start from this pc and after starting from this pc it will go to the lan and further going to lan it will check which is my the primary router based on the hsrp configuration which having the higher priority they will lan to those router and from there it is going to the internet and access the destination this is how it was going on but let's say suppose if this link goes down right for some reason this router goes down for some reason this link those goes down for some reason so either of the three conditions your failover is going to happen because you correctly configure the hsrp wan tracking also you are just tracking the lan interface also right you are just tracking the you know uh, you are just decreasing the value just lan is basically if lan is going to down no need to track it automatically decrease the priority it will understand or router is even going to down it is going to decrease the priority so might be if you are doing the wan tracking so if the wan is going down your priority might be the 1110 and this is the higher one and default is the 100 for the r2 so this is r1 and this is r2 so if this is going down wan this priority is going to decrease might be some 20 or 30 so it's become the 80 so this will become the lower than this one so it will become the active again so if this will become the active your start traffic going from this lan to this r2 and then it will start going to the atnt cloud and this will reach to the internet destination so either the scenario if wan goes down lan goes down router goes down my failover is going to happen because we correctly configured the hsrp if you don't know how hsrp is work i would recommend just go with the ccnp in core modules you'll find a very good definition for the hsrp how it is going to work right if someone want to know let me know i'll share the video free of like it is available in the my youtube channel so i'll share in very detail how is the hsrp vrrp and glvp works and how the configuration is going to work. just ping us okay so in case of this scenario this my hsrp vrrp is going to be work and this is going to do the failovers but let's assume that this link is not going down this router is not going down this this link is not going down this link is not going down this router is not going down this having some performance issue performance that means this link having some loss some latency some jitter or might be cloud itself this link having cloud itself might be you are tracking the wan itself and their cloud itself having some issues right the verizon cloud itself having some issues then in scenario how the failover is going to happen so probably it is not going to happen the failover because to happen the failover your router must be down 
your LAN link must be down, your WAN link must be down, or might be you just correctly configure the SLA monitoring for threshold for the, you know, keeping the loss latency jitter, then it is going to be happen. If not, then it is not going to happen. So how in that case, I'll achieve the failover. In that case, how I can achieve the failover. So basically in that case, it is not happen to achieve the failover. So your customer is start doing complain. Hey, I'm facing the issue while accessing the global DNS or the internet. So if it is start facing the problem, they start raising the complaint to the NOC, which is the network operation center. And might be NOC engineer have to join the call with the customer to start doing the troubleshooting. Hey, where is the issue? So while doing the troubleshooting, hey, come to know, might be my van having a problem and the losses, it's a law, like I'm getting the packet loss or latency is the high. And this is why my customer is a facing issue. So you can see you figure out the issue. There is a loss or latency on your van link. Now you just have to fix your router doesn't have capability to fix it automatically because they don't know how to fix it, how to do the failover in case of the my performance issue. So in this case, your knock engineer is start doing the working. And when you start doing the working, they just start looking on the LAN protocols, what inside of the LAN, how the HSRP is configured, we are running any OSPF, any EIGRP, any static routing for the failover. They start looking around the WAN aside configuration for the BGP and all. So most of the cases, if engineer is very skilled, might be the L2 and L3, because to doing such kind of the failover, I, I highly recommend that to the L2 plus engineer, right? Because they have complete understanding about the redistributions, the complete understanding about the FHRP, like any of the family of the FHRP, HSRP, VRRP, and GLVP, they have to understand about the BGP, how the routing, how the route map, how the policy, how the you know outbound, inbound attributes has been configured along with the route map and policy map. Then they can able to manipulate the traffic while doing the manual failover because we are talking about here the manual failover, right? Not auto failover. Auto failover doesn't happen because due to the performance issue. So if the manual failover have to be happen here, then probably engineer is start looking around the deploying the configuration to the failover. So might be if engineer is a very skilled, they can do the failover manually from this link to this link and the traffic is start going to the at &T. And then once the circuit provider will fix the packet loss issue, latency issue, then again, they have to roll back the configuration to make the original place. So you guys don't think it is a very complex because your desired devices doesn't having a capability to do everything by on. So this is another complexity we having a network in operations. We just have to put a lot of efforts to achieve the resiliency, right? So how it is going to be overcome by SD-WAN, I'll explain it. If the same scenario we having in the SD-WAN solution, let's suppose this is the R1 and again, this is the R2 and they might be connected with the same ISP for some reason, this is ISP and you're making this path as a primary and this is path as a secondary. And again, you're just having a LAN, right? And this is how it is connected. And again, this is a user is connected here. And this is not a normal router. This is now SD-WAN router. So if this is the SD-WAN router, if this link goes down, your failover is going to be happen. This link goes down, failover is going to happen. This link goes down, failover is going to happen. This router goes down, failover is going to happen. So automatically there, there's three things you are going to achieve by if having the, this kind of the problem. But even the link having a performance issue, it is not down. It is the performance issue. Then in that case also, this failover is automatically going to happen. No need any L1, L3, L2 engineer intervenes here. It is going to automatically fail over based on the your configuration, how basically you are doing the SD1 configuration policy, SLA monitoring and everything. And according to that, they are just going to do the failover. So this is a, one of the best example auto failover in case of the any circumstances, we just have to get automatically, no required. So even this customer, 
will never realize how my traffic is going on it is seamless experience for the customer it is keep thinking i am using my all the application might be the 8.8 it is hosted in say, anywhere in the global dns locations and it is never going to realize how my traffic is going on and how basically i am performing it is absolutely going to the work with the complete way so i hope it is clear to everyone so this is the another benefits of the sd wan so now i am going to talk about the complex operations so it is like uh, configuration wise it is a complex deployment wise it is a complex troubleshooting wise it is a complex always it is a complex high cost because if you are having the complex operations you have required the manpower of the very high because engineer need to many many high uh, like, like you have to do the lot of configuration on the individual router so lot of engineer is going to be required for you and all engineer basically going to deploy different different things which is going to help you in term of the achieve your legacy van solution all the rightly working operations so this because due to the complex operation your cost is also going to high because you just also have to buy some third party monitoring tool and all to just achieve your you know 24 into 7 100% uptime based operations right so moving next limited scale so this van having scalability issue because we cannot scale the network based on different different parameters so this was basically one of the biggest problem in the legacy van scalability we cannot scale our network how it is performing how basically we can understand the different different statistics of the van performance the our uh, application performance when it is using from one link versus another link when and what time of the loss latency going down and all and what is the bandwidth utilization we having so this is like problem always you having which is going to mitigate by the sdvan solution i'll explain in few minutes later then now things you think about nowadays the everyone is talking about the cloud everyone is talking about the cloud they are stop hosting the application right on legacy data centers so data center culture is like app like right now it is like uh, not using much in this scenario and everyone is just going to just take a service from the aws cloud azure cloud alibaba cloud right might be they are going to take from the uh gcp cloud so these are the very popular cloud available in the market so if you are ex, uh, hosting the application on the cloud your van technology should be intelligent should have the more robust security features while reaching to the cloud based applications because the cloud is hosted in different different countries different different regions so it is not possible for you to build dedicated mpls link to the all cloud locations you might require the internet connection because if you go for the mpls connection it is going to cost very high for you so it is better you can just use the internet connections and based on the internet connections you can have the basically uh, connectivity from the cloud provider and make the all security parameters intact so your application whatever user are interacting from the office to the location or from the home to the locations any application based cloud provider they are or they should be secure and up and working so this is how it is going to happen in the cloud readiness and this is like they having a lot of problem but sd wan having a lot of features available which is giving the flexibility while accessing the cloud based applications the next one is a fragmented security so fragmented security what that means so let's say suppose in the scenario what i was talking let's say suppose in this scenario you having a data center here this is your data center and these are the branch locations so might be this is the branch locations branch 2 branch 1 and this is the branch three locations so if this branch having a different different lan they want to talk to the isp this is the one of the isp from there they connected this way and might be this is a internet gateway which is connected to the dc so if this this branch want to go on the internet 
they will basically come from this location and they will go to the isp and then dc and here we have to deploy the firewall and from there they will go to the internet this is the one scenario or might be i can deploy firewall at the branch location also and then i can pass the traffic toward the isp and the dc and data center and from data center also it will go to the internet so if we having the hub base or zonal base breakout not local breakout for the internet or might be there would be another scenario we having a direct internet connectivity from my side so my traffic will directly come from the branch and it will go to the internet via the local dia direct internet access so in this case probably you just have to purchase the firewalls which can be deployed could be the palo alto firewall could be the asa firewall could be the checkpoint firewall could be the sopage firewall fortinet firewall whatever you can think lot of firewall available the market asa firewall also available in the market so any of the firewall you can just deploy it and the traffic will come and land to the firewall and from firewall it will go to the any of the destinations so this is the another scenario from which you just have to play around it but for that your security parameter is not going to be scaled or very intact within the box it could be fragmented it could be distributed it could be the applied for the branch location as well it could be applied to the your centralized location hub location regional locations so this is also your problem but in sd wan probably will overcome this problem as well limited application awareness they don't know how the application based routing can be achieved so let's say suppose i want to use the application based routing i want to go on the facebook right let me just see guys okay, any question anyone have till now any questions anyone want to just ask please feel free to ask the questions okay don't be so quiet i can see people are a lot of people are here in the zoom nine people are already on zoom so please ask your question if you are not understanding how i come to know like you are understanding or not so please feel free to ask the questions okay so what i am saying let's say suppose i want to go on the facebook i want to go on the youtube so youtube traffic facebook traffic or might be the google traffic this google might be the gmail i am talking i want to send the traffic i have a two router r1 and r2 they might be connected to the isp i want to send the traffic for the facebook via this router and the gmail or yahoo traffic google based traffic on this router so this is basically based on the applications so any user trying to access the facebook i am not talking about based on the destinations i am talking about the based on the applications this router should have in the intelligence they understand the application behavior they understand the application nature and based on the application behavior and nature they can basically redirect the traffic to a destination from the one link or versus another link so this is also it was missing in the legacy wan scenario which is our past wan or still it is going to replace by the sd wan bandwidth issue you just having a two routers one having the 100 mps another having also 100 mps so in case at a one time one link as acting as a active another link as acting another router acting as a passive so at a one time only one router bandwidth is going to be utilized in the majority of the cases and if it goes down then only the traffic is going to be shipped to the another link it not having a too much flexibility where i can send the dual traffic active active traffic to the both of the links for the different different purpose so this is how bandwidth utilization also we having the problems we having a still bandwidth but we are not utilizing the effectively to just meet our network requirement this join solution we just not having the very good design where i can say my all solution throughout the in to out from data center to branch location is very uniform so in this my sd wan solution if you see that i have the very uniform solution i know what is the transport how they are connected to the branches when they connected what is the sd wan router is going to do how they are going to form the tunnels between the controllers uh, for the omp tunnels how they are going to tls and dtls and how they are going to form how the routing for the omp is going to enable between the branches to the we smart how the ip signal going to form between the you know router to routers to exchange the data traffic so these all features we are having available in the 
my sd wan solution but in previous solution i have different different solution might be i am using somewhere in the ospf somewhere in the bgp somewhere the mpls somewhere the ipsec so it is not very inform kind of solution where i can say i have very good and very uniform solution apply in the all location so this is all challenges i have in the legacy sd wan solution but it is if i talk about the sd wan solution why sd wan and what are the benefits then we can understand so all these challenges whatever i am saying here it is going to replace with the sd wan solution it is going to overcome with the sd wan solution when you start using this so in the sd wan solution basically the first benefits what we have overall performance is going to improve so your networking performance security performance whatever you are using it is going to improve by the use of the sd wan solutions so this is the first thing you are going it is going to boost your security capabilities so in the previous boxes whenever you using like if you having one of the router and this is connected to the lan if you want to achieve the security you just have to use the third party firewalls might be the cisco asa checkpoint fortinet suppose any of the firewall but if you are using the sd wan the security is going to inbuilt within the box so no need to the depend on the any third party firewall you just have to be license valid license available on the your box and you can see this security is already available here in the sd wan boxes and you can just go for the direct internet access if you want to go for the compliances you just have to define the security policies where you can create the zones you can apply the you know filtering uh, for the different different like you want to define the some rules based on the source and destinations you want to allow or deny anything you can do it similar to the firewall so it is already available in this particular security feature so you can see in this particular we having a lot of feature available like the you can see policy if i go the next this is like ips intrusion prevention system if you go next you will find some other policy as well see let me just show you what other if i go in the custom not the compliance you can see the firewall policy we just have if you want to create this is the ips policy and this is the url filtering if you want to do this is also advanced malware protection also available here and dns security also available here and the this is the final policy summary so you can just do all the things if you want to do the firewall feature intrusion prevention system url filtering advanced malware protection dns security these all feature available within the sd wan box no need to buy any third party boxes for the sd wan so this is how it is going to help you in term of the sd wan security as well so this is the our sd wan security so lower complexity because i talk in the previous wan we having the higher complex operations in the this scenario sd wan it is going to lower down your complexity but it because it is having the lot of features automatic failover lot of policy based intent when routing we can do application based routing we can do we can just uh, if you want to upgrade the ios you want to do the configuration of the any of the devices then you can see how we can do that so earlier in the previous cases if i want to have the ios upgradation for the boxes probably it was taking a lot of time but now a case let's say suppose i am using the sd wan solution i have a 10000 box or might be 1000 box and i want to upgrade the ios so you can see i just have to select the if i want to let me just see just go software upgrade if i am going and let's suppose this these are the my branch location sites so this is a five four site right now but it could be the 100 and 1000 if i want to upgrade the ios in one go i can just simply go and select and i can upgrade so there is no software repository available in my uh, we manage if it is available i it is just going to take the software from repository and it is going to upgrade and the box will be reboot and then finally your box will be the upgraded so single click one engineer can do the 1000 or 10000 or 20000 router if you having a requirement from the we manage just i am giving the example in practically it is not going to happen in 10000 and 20000 router in one go because uh, it's a huge risk so but you can go in for the multiple router ios upgradation multiple router configurations you know one go you just have to play around with the sd wan single pane of glass of the we manage from there you can just deploy so i'll explain what is a v manage what is a v smart and what is a v bond and what is a vh yeah i have one question pankaj so i want to know that we can also upgrade means l2 switch it ios and l3 switch it ios here it is possible Thanks. or we can uh, uh, 
yeah that's a really good question sanjay thanks for asking so see the boxes basically which is part of the sd van so what are the sd van boxes we having okay, these okay. Two controllers we managed, we, we yes. both be man okay okay be yes. smart these yeah. only can be managed through the controller ch vh or the vh these are the legacy cisco sd van it cannot be upgraded from this particular control because these are not going to un understand these boxes okay sanjay sure thank you thank you sanjay all right so this is how it is going to be upgraded so earlier it was not possible in the legacy van but uh, it is possible in the our hd van solution so moving next so this is the like uh, it is going to lower complexity enables the cloud uses so cloud is now a day very trend very you know unique features everyone is using what i talk so it is just going to build the ipsec tunnel with the clouds you just need a like uh, internet connections from the let me just see it is just going to take the internet connection and those internet connections might be the dia direct internet connections or might be from the local breakout you can go might be let us suppose this is a local breakout this side want to go on the internet they can go from there and from there it will go to the internet in this way this is the one breakout for this side they having a two path it can go with the regional hub from this way i'll tell you how this going to be configured this way to one of the local breakout uh, sorry remote breakout one is the local breakout so this is a two way so either way we just have to make the reachability with the cloud data center providers and from there you can build the very secure tunnels and from them you can access the application from the sitting at the any of the branch locations and even you are not sitting in the branch location you are working from home the policy is going to enforce based on the your home based solution whatever vpn you are just using and they are just going to connect to any of the data center location from there it is going to make a connection to the cloud applications so no need to buy dedicated mpls links no need to think about more cost just need a pure internet connection and it is going to help your you know and solve your purpose it is like reduce the cost definitely it is the cost going to reduce very much cost it's going to re reduce because a lot of boxes you are reducing no security firewall is going to require the firewall feature already in build no other uh, manpower is going to require because a limited manpower can like handle your entire sd wan fabric so this is going to reduce your cost in different way no other third party uh, tools is going to required because this tools itself having the monitoring capabilities you can see if you go in the monitoring things let me show you mm, dashboard if you want to go these are the complete monitoring how your performance is going on which line you can see which control link is down which router is down what is the utilization bandwidth ban van health your you seeing here what is the transport what is the application you can see loss latency and jitter you can real time you can see which link having the which kind of loss latency no need to worry at all you just have to see and you will get that information and you can see if you go here you can see the alarms and events so all alarms and events you can just monitor from here and you can integrate to any of the tools which is going to give the email alert as well so events also you can see here all the events what is happening on the your network that is going to be so all feature is going to be available so no need to buy the any additional monitoring tools also it is going to single pan of glass where you can do the configuration by setting on the we manage you can create the policy you can create a template you can create that uh, security profiles you can onboard the devices you can monitor the devices real time you can do the ping and trace everything if you want to even take the cli access of the boxes you no need to go anywhere just have to go on these boxes and uh, let me show ssh terminal so if i want to just take a cli access any of the boxes let's suppose these all boxes are working so if i want to take the vh cli access so there is one way i can just go and log into the jump host to these boxes and then i'll get the cli access you can see here the cli access i can take from here but if i am sitting on the vmanage i want to take the vh4 cli access so what i have to do just uh, where is the vh4 so vh4 is not onboarded still for some reason let me see about the vs3 so vs3 you can see here it just i clicked here and it is going to give the cli access here automatically so you can see just i have to log in and i can even i want to cli no need to worry about the third party jump host and all 
let me see why it's not taking the password see so this is my cli access so, so run so i'll get the all configuration you can see so interfaces and command is the similar like uh, uh, cisco switch yeah yeah little bit difference but uh, almost similar you understand very easily so you can see uh, there is some so interface detail it is going to give in this way so little bit different not exactly similar but almost it is similar no need to worry about that so if you run the swipe so if you run the bgp in the your routers or so you run so ip bgp summary right but here it is something different it will take a command so bgp summary it is more like uh, i can say you can see here this is the bgp summary so little bit different not exactly same but it is related you can quickly understand no need to worry at all right cli so this is how i can log in the boxes and if i want to do the real time troubleshooting any of the boxes it is also possible which is not possible in the legacy one let me show you how it is possible so if we want to just do the real time troubleshooting let's suppose i want to troubleshoot any of the boxes real time ping test or health monitoring how it is doing so you can go in the real time of the boxes and this will show the real time actual how this box is behaving if you want to check this how the application is running and on which links and what is the usage you can just extract 1 hour 3 hour 6 hour 12 hour 24 hours link uses from here if you want to check the interfaces you can understand which interface having the which kind of the bandwidth right now what is my tx load what is my rx load what is the real time if i want to check the custom historical it is also possible for you so it is always good to use this and it is also so going to show you which transport is up which transport is down what is the ip address configured so everything the one throughput if you want to check this is also possible you can verify here if you want to check the flow of the applications how the application is flowing from the links it is there is no graph because there is nothing is going on we are in the lab top tucker information which user is consuming which top ip address to access in the application that is also possible tunnels information t logs information you can see this is a, t a tunnel information t logs they are talking mpls link and they are showing what is the loss latency for these links even you can see the real time okay and you can see how much loss this is the graphical things and if you want to see some region let's say suppose 6 hour back some ap ap application having some issue or might be a customer complaint there is some issue in my network so you can just go there and just particular time of period you can fetch the graph and you can see what is happening in my sd1 fabric this is also possible so similarly you can see the security features you want to do the troubleshooting in the like ping and trace that is also possible if you want to simulate the traffic how it is going on based on my network so let us suppose i want to simulate if i want to access any of the locations any of the routing then how can i want to check which link is taking the path so let me just try to access 5.6.6.1 let me just go so vpn 10 is service vpn i'll tell you from the beginning how it is going to work 10.5.6.1 i want to based on the protocol 6 tcp source i can use any random port and destination let me use 80 i want to simulate so you can see this is unreachable for any regions there is might be node connectivity if it is reachable then it is going to show you the reachability informations so let me just use some other ip might be let me just see if we having anything reachable so run let me see what is the vpn vpn 10 should show ip route vpn 10 so i'm getting the subnet age uh, 10.5.10.5.101 so let me just try this one okay no problem sanjay thank you so much for joining us okay thank so you, all right so this is my this is my destination 10.5.101 so let me just try this one 10.5.101.1 let me just simulate it and you can see this is showing this particular traffic is going by the mps link to the destination so from this side i have a two links right now 
one is the internet one is the mpls but the traffic is right now going by the mpls not internet because the internet is not live even the internet is live and you want to send the traffic it will show which link is taking the traffic to go to destination you can just simulate the you know packet how my traffic flow is going on from the which link so that is also possible trace ping is also possible so this is the beauty of the sd wan so moving next so we just also having this uh, cost reduction intent, intent with networking so if i want to manipulate the traffic as per my need i want to send the application traffic from one link versus another links i want to track something i want to monitor something i want to do some kind of the scalability for the my network manipulation for the improve my scalability performance that intends when intent with networking is possible with the sdn solutions it was not possible in the legacy wan solution predictable application experience so let's say suppose i i have the different different application which are hosted in different different location i want to just understand how they are behaving what is the like uh, benefits and uh, what is the drawback while using the one link versus another links and how the application is behaving which uh, hosted in the some other region versus another region this all can be predicted because you having the some artifact some statistics available from the you know different different cloud provider different different circuits and you can compare them and after comparing you can probably get some output and based on the output you can just take the actions so this is the like uh, prediction application experiences application aware routing so already explain you having the facebook based routing you can do that you can yahoo based routing you can do the google based routing you can do that gmail based routing drop based office 365 any of the application salesforce if you want to do the routing it is possible to do with the application aware routing which is not possible in the legacy network zero touch provisioning this is also very unique feature without touching the boxes so how i can do the configuration so for that we having a very dedicated module i'll explain from very basic how this zero touch provisioning is going to be happen so if i go in my ppt you can see this is the complete zero touch provisioning document we have and we just have to follow the 11 steps and i'll explain how when the router is going to be on boarded on the sites when it turn on how they are going to communicate with the different different servers and how they are going to get that automatic ip address and how it will be on board from the like normal like normal location to sd wan fabric and it will get all the routing and the configuration from the we manage so this is the very unique feature and also it is going to build a zero trust fabric so what is a zero trust fabric that means let's say suppose anyone want to join the sd wan fabric so by default they are not allowed to join the fabric they just have to they just have to prove i am the one who is eligible to join the fabric so by default everything is denied so we having a different different orchestration plane management plane control plane which i am going to explain tomorrow because tomorrow on the same time our class is already started today is the demo class but from tomorrow it is going to be tomorrow will be also the live class but it is going to be closed live it only available on the zoom after the after tomorrow so if anyone want to join tomorrow i'll explain from this all how what is our orchestration plane what is a management plane what is a control plane what is a data plane and in that i'll explain what is a zero trust fabric so let me just explain what is a zero trust fabric let me see yeah see here is a zero trust fabric so that means let's say suppose if any one any devices want to join the sd wan fabric they must have to prove i am the right person i want to join the device if they fail to prove they will not allow to join the fabric so they have to have basically proof i am the right and i want to join so how they are going to prove they having a serial number they having a certificates how they are going to show how they are going to present i'll explain in the very detail so this is also in the zero trust fabric so these are the key benefits i hope you guys enjoy about the benefits and the drawback of the sd wan and how it is going to be basically uh, integrated in the lab i'll explain in very details because lab is quite interesting for us and you guys will get the lab access as well and where you can just log into the devices you can play around the devices you can do the configuration and all so that's all from today from my side guys anyone having any questions here any question any doubt on this today session because i i don't want to extend this session for today because a lot of theoretical same i have discussed so tomorrow on the same time will make the very interesting things i'll go with the uh, 
official PPT of the Cisco SD WAN will I explain from the very scratch how this deployment can be happened, where these devices can be deployed. And what are different different platform? What are different different model of the routers, the so VH and CH, and how basically uh, we can define the V bond, V manage, V smart. What that mean? How they are going to build the control plane, data plane, management plane, orchestration plane. So everything I will explain from the very zero because today we just discuss about the van and uh, its benefits, and its drawback, and the SD van its benefits and the drawback. Okay, so I hope it is a clear understanding for you. But tomorrow, definitely, it is going to pure SD WAN discussion where I'll discuss the SD WAN. And if I'll get the time, probably we'll have the two hour session for tomorrow. We'll try to build a lab from zero. So, what I'll do, let me just show you. I'll stop this lab. Okay. And after stopping this lab, let me show you. I'll just create a new lab for this month. We are in the already August. So this is the August batch lab. So let me just see once it is stopped. So what I'll do, I'll just, uh, uh, let me just, we're having the copy option. Yeah, I can clone this lab, you can see. So this is my lab, I have cloned it. And this is, I can say, August SD WAN lab. Okay. So this is a new lab. And in this lab, basically, if I start this lab, there will be zero configuration. There will be zero configuration. Murli, you want to ask anything? Any question you have? So, no, sir. No, sir. Okay. You able to understand, right? Yes, sir. I'm able to understand. <laughs> okay. Okay. No worry. So uh, if anyone having any issue to understand this batch will be the English batch, but still, if you're having any difficulty, just get the free of cost, like uh, Hindi videos, there will be no chargeable. So just, you can, you know, uh, go with that Hindi videos, the content would be the same, only the, the way of language is going to be changed English and Hindi. So this batch will purely in the English, not in Hindi. <coughs> There's some people having the demand. Oh, you are not well. It's a little cough, sir. That, uh, okay, okay. Cool. All right. Yeah, please take care of yourself. Okay. Yes. All right. So you can see, I just uh, started this lab, and this lab probably no configuration will be there. Let me show you one of the box. Let me see. So this system is initializing. So this is dummy lab basically, and we'll start doing very scratch configuration from zero. We'll do the all configuration from tomorrow onward. So let's wait. Let me show you. And this is quite interesting for everyone. Okay, so now my system is ready. The admin, admin. Oh, sorry. So see, this is asking the new password because they don't have any password here. See, this doesn't having anything configured, all dummy configuration. So any of the boxes I start, none, none, none of having any configuration. See, this box is also having any no configuration. So I promise I start from zero for this lab configuration. That is going to be very interesting. Everything I'll do from very zero and you guys will be enjoy, okay? And I request to everyone also, when you uh, get your lab access, probably today or tomorrow, you can start your configuration from very zero. Only IP schema will be there, lab topology will be there, but configuration you can do as per your requirement. So hope it is clear to everyone. Any other question guys, or we are good to close this session. Okay, so I hope we are good. So we can stop this session here and we can continue on the same time by tomorrow. Okay guys, thank you so much. Have a great day ahead. Bye. Take care.